Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome back to our final part, part five of Renal Tumors, What You Really Need to Know. Anyway, we left off last time making the comment about metastasis are rare to the kidney, but they're a great mimicker of primary tumors. You know, we think about lymphoma as you have a lesion in the kidney. We discuss that. We talk about how you have incidental renal cell cancers. We talked about transitional cell carcinoma. But it's important to recognize that a renal mass, particularly in a patient with a known cancer like breast cancer or lung cancer or melanoma, can develop a metastasis. It does not necessarily mean that it's a new primary. How we manage these patients with oligometastatic disease will depend on the primary tumor and depend on the patient, and typically it's a multidisciplinary approach. These days, particularly if tumors are smaller and there's no other disease present, partial nephrectomy or ablation can be done, but that's really going to depend a lot on the primary tumor and the patient's other diseases that are present. In this article by Zhao, we found that the most common primary tumors in descending order were lung, colorectal, head and neck, breast, soft tissue, and thyroid. This is consistent with, well, we all know that lung cancer is the most prevalent source of metastasis to the kidney. Now, when I think about colorectal cancer, I've seen colorectal involve the kidney when you have recurrence, particularly by direct extension. It's pretty rare, and I cannot remember a really good case recently of metastasis, but to me, the one that I think about are lung, breast, and melanoma. Here's a good example of a patient with breast cancer. You can see the lesion in the left breast. Patient's being treated. There's a left pleural effusion. There's adenopathy in the mediastinum. And there's a mass in both the left and the right kidney. Looking only at the kidneys, you could have thought about lymphoma. You could have thought about synchronous primary tumors. This was eventually biopsied. You also see the liver mets. This was metastatic renal cell carcinoma from a breast primary. So again, with metastasis, it could be unilateral or could be bilateral. Things that, of course, help you. You have the patient with a known primary. And patients who have renal meds will often have other meds, be that to lung or, as in this case, to liver, as well as the left iliac crest in this patient. Just a really nice example of metastatic breast cancer involving the kidneys. This is a patient with non-small cell lung cancer, patient and hematuria. You can see the non-contrast scans aren't all that impressive. There are renal calculi present, something questionable posterior and mid-portion of the left kidney. And once you give IV contrast, you see bilateral solid renal masses. Metastases typically are hypovascular. Every once in a while, it's hypervascular, and those are typically contralateral renal T renal metastasis, not from TCC, but from clear cell. But this was lung cancer metastatic to the kidneys. Looks exactly like the breast cancer case. Solid masses, not really distorting much of the contour, being infiltrative, but within the renal outline. Very nicely shown here on the 3D imaging as well. So again, I want you to at least consider the possibility of metastasis, unilateral or bilateral, in a patient with a known primary with hematuria or a known renal mass. So just a really, really nice example. Now, there's one other lesion I just wanted to mention because it shows up every once in a while and causes confusion. It's what's called a mess tumor or mixed epithelial and stromal tumor of the kidney. It goes by many other names in the past, including cystic hamartoma or adult mesoblastic nephroma. The majority of these tumors are diagnosed in women, and females are affected 10 times more commonly than males. There's a range of ages, but most commonly in fifth decade, and the lesions present just like a renal cell, flank pain, hematuria, and often an abdominal mass. They're rare benign tumors. They will be resected and the patient will do fine. They are hereditary. 
If they're not totally resected, they can recur, and rare examples of malignant transformation have been reported, but that's exceedingly rare. MESS usually present as unilateral and solitary kidney lesions. They're usually well demarcated on CT scans, and they're most commonly confused with other cystic renal lesions, and they're often described as Bosniak 3 or 4 in the Bosniak calcification, but on the Bosniak calcification, they will be highly suspicious for malignancy. And again, you'll see no evidence of adenopathy. You'll see no evidence of distant spread of disease. Now, MESS tumors can mimic a variety of benign and malignant renal cancers, including cystic nephroma, complex renal cysts, and even cystic renal cell carcinoma. So the diagnosis is one of those things that's difficult, is one of those things that often I'll show at conference because it's tricky. Here's an example, non-contrast contrast. Complex cystic lesion, multiple septations. You might even think about hydatid cysts. They're rare in the kidney but occur, but they're then about 70 or 80% of calcification. This has a little bit of rim calcification. When you look at the coronal view, look how it kind of comes off the kidney. You can almost cut it off with the uh, cursor here, right? That's the classic look of a mess tumor. It's a complex cystic lesion with multiple cysts pushing on the kidney. And you can see very nicely, there's the pathology from this case. You can see why, if you've never seen one before, you wouldn't suggest it, and you would talk about a complicated stage three or Bosniak three or four classification. Here's another one with areas of high density and calcification. This one's even larger. Again, you might think about a cystic renal cell carcinoma as you look at the images. And then when you look at the coronals, you can see there's a little bit of normal remaining lower portion of the patient's right kidney. But again, complex solid and cystic lesion with septation, some increased density. And this too was resected and was also a mess tumor. Just a really nice example. And there's the third case on the left kidney, cystic septations, no true vascularity on the arterial phase imaging, maybe a little bit of thickening in the septation or in the wall. Again, complex cyst, cystic neoplasm is something you're going to think about. On the coronal view, the multiple septations are seen, which make it look more like the first two cases. But again, thickened wall, can I assume this is not just a cystic renal cell carcinoma? I cannot. This was resected. You can see the patient had a total nephrectomy. If you're thinking about a mess tumor, you can get by at times with a partial nephrectomy. So again, this article we wrote, Linda Chu, a number of years ago, given its variable appearance, mess may mimic an array of tumors, and we said this before, adult cystic nephroma, cystic RCC, complex cysts, multi-cystic dysplastic kidney, and possibly even a renal abscess or an obstructed duplicating collecting system. So again, it's a very challenging diagnosis and something you need to be aware of. And again, uh, most people are simply going to read this as a Bosniak 3 or 4. The patient will get surgery. If you can suggest the possibility, then they might consider a biopsy, and surely they will consider partial nephrectomy over a total nephrectomy. So that becomes very important from a management perspective. Now, I've covered everything I wanted to cover, multiple lesions. I mentioned some of the difficulties and complexities between lesions simulating other processes. I showed you how tr transitional cells can look like renal cell carcinoma and how transitional cells can look like lymphoma and how lymphoma and abscess can overlap, and how mess tumors can look like complicated cystic clear cell renal cell carcinomas. We spoke about many things. We know that protocols are critical in understanding of lesions, the role of multiplanar and 3D we've also hinted at a little bit. If you look forward, AI, I think, will play a major role in helping us recognize tumors. There's been a few articles talking about AI 
both not only in renal cell but in prostate cancer and bladder cancer, helping us predict what the lesions are and also helping predict how to manage the patients. Radiomics as part of AI integrated with artificial intelligence offers a pioneering approach to urologic oncology, ushering in a new era of enhanced diagnostic precision and reduced invasiveness, guiding patient-tailored treatment plans. So you could see there's lots coming along. We've come a long way. We don't resect 25% of lesions that end up being benign. We still resect benign lesions because we're not perfect, but we've learned a lot and continue to learn, and I think AI will help us. I think conclusion CT with CTA and 3D imaging is the study of choice for detection and staging of renal tumors. Our accuracy will be depending on the protocols. There are certain pitfalls I've discussed that need to be avoided. We talked about protocols when you do non-contrast, the importance of non-contrast, the importance of cortical medullary phase, how many phases do we do, how do we minimize dose while optimizing lesion detection and classification are all things that are very important and things you need to work on and make sure you're doing correctly in your practice. The kidneys somehow at times will take a back to other processes because people think, oh, the kidneys are easy to look at. They are easier at times to pick up lesions than pancreas, but at times they're not so easy and confusion as to what the lesions are is still in place 50 years after the discovery of CT. So I think there's lots of things to think about. There's lots of things we can do. And again, remember from the first slides, lesion detection is step one, but classification becomes critical and we're doing that better and we still need to learn how to do it better. We need to know the specific signatures of lesions so we can do better. And hopefully in this five-part adventure, I've helped you understand tumors better. I hope you understand how to do protocols better. And I hope you have a great day. So with that, thank you very much. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.